Hello there, and welcome to the Adipec Energy Dialogues, a series of conversations bringing you up to date with leaders in energy from around the world. Now, I'm delighted to be welcoming today the president and the CEO of Impact Corporation from Japan. Please, a very warm welcome, Takeyuki Uedo. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much, Etna. I'm very happy to answer to your questions. And it's so good You're to welcome. have you here with us. And when we think back on the year 2020, it's been a bit of a tough year for everybody. What do you think really when you look at the focus that you have to have for the year ahead? And how has COVID-19 perhaps interrupted strategic plans, but maybe made you redesign your business strategy as you look ahead in terms of longer term challenges? Yeah, well, my view is uh, that uh, COVID-19 has brought two major changes globally. Uh, the first change concerns the way we approach security and the second concerns our lifestyle. There are many aspects to security like national security, financial security and physical security. COVID-19 highlighted the challenges in maintaining security across supply chains. But from our perspective, as an oil and gas uh, company, the pandemic has uh, particularly enhanced our awareness of uh, energy security. While energy security has been talked about for a long time, we are now much more concerned about ensuring our energy independence. We are strengthening our resilience to contribute to this objective by maintaining stable energy production at home and diversifying our portfolio through securing energy assets globally. Of course, uh, securing also extend to the health, safety, and well-being of our workforce to build our resilience and ensure business uh, continuity. Uh, meanwhile, COVID-19 has brought on major lifestyle uh, changes. More people work from home and less people travel. These lifestyle changes have impacted the supply and demand for gasoline and jet fuel not to mention oil price, while promoting widespread automation and digital transformations. As an industry, we must address the medium-term and long-term implications of this and adapt our business accordingly. We will need to work on improving the efficiency of our operations, optimizing our portfolio, and strengthening our business partnership. Now, of course, uh, one thing that hasn't changed is your business continuity very much in Abu Dhabi. You have been here for 45 years, a tremendous presence here. Talk to us about the importance of this relationship in Abu Dhabi for Impex Jodco. Yeah, okay. Well, uh, as you know, Japan currently imports one fourth of its oil uh, from Abu Dhabi. And the majority of the Abu Dhabi crude oil is uh, destined for Japan's. Abu Dhabi is of huge importance, not just for us, but for Japan as a whole. And Japan-Abu Dhabi relations are supported by strong academic and economic and political ties. Since uh, 1973, I believe, when we acquired a stake in the Adoma concession, Abu Dhabi has always been a core business area for us. And we expect it will continue to be so for many years. In Abu Dhabi, we have five concession agreements, more than any other IOC anywhere in the world. They are Upper Zakum, Lower Zakum, Sata, and Umadaluk, the onshore concessions and onshore block four. We therefore work very closely with Adnok and send many of our employees to the operating companies led by Adnok. We have clearly communicated, committed, our human and technical resources to oil field development and production in Abu Dhabi. And this shows just how important Abu Dhabi is for us. As a result, our operations in Abu Dhabi contribute significantly to our net production, which was 581,000 barrels of oil equivalent per day as of the first half of this year. COVID-19 has further highlighted the importance of our assets in Abu Dhabi. 
uh, guided by the strong leadership of uh, His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahir, President of the UAE, and uh, His Highness Sheikh Muhammad uh, bin Zayed Al Nahyan, the uh, Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi, has uh, maintained its political stability as one of the region's leading powers. Meanwhile, uh, Dr. Sultan has uh, led efforts to ensure the cost competitiveness, profitability, and stable production of Dhabi oil. In uh, 2018, we were appointed asset leader of the lower Zakun field, where we are working proactively with Adnok and our partner to pursue greater production capacity, growth, and value uh, creation. And of course, in 2018, then you were appointed the acid leader of the lower Zakam field. How, how did that change the way you, you actually operated in Abu Dhabi? Yeah, uh, we now ha have an even stronger partnership with Adnok and are much more hands-on. I remember we are the only IOC with concession agreements for both the upper uh, Zakam and lower Zakam oil field. This allows us to draw on the synergies generated by the knowledge and experience we have of developing the two oil fields, as well as the technical resources we have deployed. Um, for, for example, uh, we can promote the joint use of production facilities on the artificial islands that have recently been developed. These efforts have been helped increase production capacity and lower production costs allowing us to make an even greater contribution to Abu Dhabi's upstream industry. Now, you talk about technology, but let's look at new technology, innovation, indeed, digital transformation, and particularly at a time of COVID-19 too. How has this helped the oil and gas companies, indeed helped them maybe be more efficient and help them prepare for the future? And where have you seen the biggest impact? Well, um, new technology, and digital transformation are essential for the three things we need to do most under COVID-19 and beyond. Improve efficiency, ensure security, and reduce cost. Um, considering the restrictions in travel and personal contact, perhaps the greatest impact so far has been made by technologies enabling remote and non-contact operations to prevent the spread of infections. Of course, you have the IT infrastructure enabling remote access to uh, servers, allowing office personnel to work from home. But uh, there are many technologies that uh, are being developed and have the potential to support the more technical aspects of our industry in different ways. Well, drone technology, augmented reality, and the uh, Pi system are some examples of technologies that we have deployed in field operations to keep our core business of oil and natural gas production running smoothly. These technologies can of course be deployed not just at our own upstream operations, but across the entire supply chain, potentially contributing to uh, climate response initiatives too. Now, of course, when we look at energy transition and also the climate change response, as you say, it's a key topic for oil and gas companies right now. And many IOCs are becoming energy companies rather than just oil mm -hmm. and gas companies. What are your right. plans at IMPEX? Well, um, first let me uh, briefly talk about the uh, backdrop of the energy transition. There are many uh, scenarios being floated. Some say oil demand peaked in 2019. Others say that oil demand will continue to grow for another two decades or more. I suspect that peak oil demand will fall somewhere in between. But important thing is to make plans around projections that are based on reality. One of my peers uh, recently joked that uh, more and more companies are doing uh, it uh, the other way around. In other words, making plans first and then making projections to suit uh, those plans. 
And the reality is that oil and gas demand will continue to grow, especially in Asia. There is the danger that a lack of investment in upstream and create a supply bottleneck and eventually increase prices dramatically in the medium to long term. Therefore, we feel that E&P continues to be a key industry and we will continue to focus on this, our core business. Having said that, however, we fully understand that the climate change response is a critical business issue for IOCs and determines our social license to operate. Like many of our peers, we aim to proactively contribute to the realization of a low carbon society based on the long-term targets outlined in the Paris Agreement. This will involve managing and reducing greenhouse gas emissions across all sectors while promoting renewable energy initiatives. We will also continue our work on carbon dioxide containment and pursue the practical applications of carbon capture and storage, as well as carbon capture and utilization technologies like artificial photosynthesis and methanations. Another area we'll be looking closely as is hydrogen, which is of course is a zero emission energy solutions. Hydrogen production takes many forms, but we believe we are in a good position to apply our existing resources and capabilities to produce so-called blue hydrogen derived from natural gas. Our experience in carbon dioxide storage and gas liquefactions, transportations and distribution could also allow us to contribute widely across the entire hydrogen value chain. So a lot of exciting plans for the future, but talk to me now yeah. about your production and distribution. I believe you have 60% oil and maybe 40% gas right now. How important has gas and LNG production at the moment? How important is it for you, particularly at home and indeed for exports? Well, yes, yes. As you say, our production ratio stands at about 60% oil and 40% natural gas since the startup of our ICSIS LNG project in Australia. Well, prior to ICSIS, the ratio was 70% for oil and 30% for natural gas. And eventually, we plan to bring the ratio closer to 50-50 with the startup of the Abadi LNG project in Indonesia as part of our gas shift policy. Natural gas is the cleanest burning fossil fuel and is widely expected to play an important role in the transition to a low carbon society. The variation, the various decarbonization scenarios, all projects are strong demand for natural gas. In terms of Japan's energy mix, uh, LNG is expected to be a key component even in the medium to long term. Demand for natural gas in other parts of Asia is expected to continue to increase until at least 2040 or 2050. We mainly uh, supply our natural gas to these markets and we are also working our building a gas value chain business, including gas infrastructure across the regions. Therefore, uh, to ensure stable supply of energy to Japan and the Asia region, we will continue to develop our LNG business uh, centers on projects such as ICSIS in Australia and Abadi in Indonesia. Of course, uh, crude oil will also continue to be an important source of energy for some time. And we will continue to work towards helping increase the production capacity of Abu Dhabi oil field. Now, of course, there's a lot of demand for you know, renewable and cleaner energy. And talk to me about your investment making uh, decision, particularly when it's based on the growing focus on renewable. I mean, initiatives, you know, that you have on geothermal in Indonesia and even wind in Japan. Yeah. Well, uh, looking ahead to 2040 and 2050, we'll continue to make the appropriate investment decisions at the appropriate time. 
with the goal of sustainably uh, expanding our corporate value and building a portfolio that can uh, flexibly respond to our changing business environment. As we have uh, laid out in our long time vision, we plan for renewable energy initiatives to make up 10% of our portfolio by 2040. Yosamo is an area in which we can make use of our vast experience as an E and P companies. We are now implementing multiple projects both in Japan and Indonesia, and we plan on uh, further expanding this uh, business. Uh, in terms of wind, we are, um, as you say, uh, involved in an onshore wind power generation project in Japan. We see a lot of potential in this area too. And we are especially keen on offshore floating wind power generation opportunities. As an, an island nation, Japan has one of the world's largest uh, territorial seas with a considerable long-term potential for offshore wind energy projects. Uh, Prime Minister Suga recently announced that Japan would uh, aim to be carbon neutral by 2050. We aim to play our part in contributing to Japan's uh, net zero ambitions. So a lot going on. And earlier you actually touched on um, peak oil demand. So just before we conclude, if I could just ask you, I mean, where do you stand on this issue? And how is this actually, you know, impacting your investment decisions when we look at business diversification and security of supply? Mm -hmm. Well, as uh, uh, many experts have said, Asia is uh, expected to lead global economic growth. And we were closely monitoring market development. Um, oh, we, we believe that uh, the demand for hydrocarbon based on energy, especially natural gas, will continue to grow until at least 2040 and uh, poised to fulfill our mission of ensuring a stable supply of energy to our customers across the region. And uh, as I said earlier, um, we must be realistic about oil peak projections and excessively early peak oil views may perhaps uh, be a little bit uh, misguided. Therefore, we'll make investment in E&P as needed to ensure we can continue to meet demand. Of course, the oil peak will come eventually, uh, possibly uh, somewhere in the 2030s. To prepare for this, we'll pursue business uh, diversification and focus on initiatives. I mentioned earlier, including uh, CO2 reductions and containment, renewables and hydrogens. Thank you. So great plan. So thank you so much for taking the time to actually, you know, share your views and indeed your plans with us here at Adipec. I really thank you, um, Takeyuki Ueda. Thank you for taking the time, President and CEO of Impex Corporation. We really appreciate your time. Well, thank you very much. I really enjoyed uh, your interview. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Thank you. thank you so much. And just a quick word to everybody, of course, watching this. I just want to thank all our viewers for being with us. The Adipec Energy Dialogues brought to you, of course. We're always happy to have you here. And to keep an eye on our website, of course, for more Adipec Energy Dialogues. Thank you all so much.